We're still going. We're still absolutely fine. Just, oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Now we're dead. Hey guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are back with Rails Unlimited and we're checking out five brand new locomotives. So yeah guys, let's get into the video. Alright, so this is the first locomotive we are checking out. This is the Ozark Mountaineer and this is a free steam locomotive. And this is really cool. I love the cars being like a different color than the uh, the engine because it really stands out a lot more. But uh, yeah, I'll let Railroad take it away. He's got a ton of information on this locomotive, so... All right, so the locomotive that Jesse and I are referring to is St. Louis San Francisco Railway number 1522, otherwise known by rail fans as the Frisco. It's a 482 mountain type, and it was built in 1926 by Baldwin. It was retired in 1959, donated to the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, and uh, it was on display until 1988 and ran excursions from then until 2002. And I was lucky enough to visit it in person recently in uh, 2019, this year. Yeah, so that's actually really awesome that you got to see this actual locomotive and we are playing it in Rails Unlimited. So that's really nice. You know, I and also, really, I really this like this locomotive because it's, it's free. You don't have to pay anything for it, unlike the Blue Comet and the other locomotives, the Keystone, I think. Uh, I don't know Blue, if that was free. Was Blue the, Comet and Keystone are now free as well. Yes, but Blue I don't Comet know if... Was, the, Keystone Blue was Comet free was premium beginning. at one point, but now it's yeah. uh, free. I believe but, the yeah. Blue Comet was like one Robux or something. I am glad that they added 1522 because I know a lot of people have wanted to see it come back into operation, at least for excursion use, but I was only like two or three years old when they stopped running it. I'm glad that it's finally added, at least in a you know train-related game, to where I can actually, in a sense, get to see it running. Yeah, so basically right now, I think we are... No, we won't derail here because the track isn't broken. I'm not I'm not even going to derail this thing. I don't want to derail a locomotive I got to see in person. That would just be immoral of me. The whistle and bell, Jesse, I think are from the actual locomotive. Oh, really? Well, I mean, that would make... Oh, gosh. Uh... Uh-oh. Stay there. I'm going to determine if it's able to be salvaged. Oh, right yeah. No, it? no. It, it, it's not going to be salvaged. I, I'm sorry. It... it it's on its side, isn't it? Yeah, and the uh, the tender is crumpled. The the steam locomotive is on its side. Tender and water tender are on its side. That's what this tender behind the actual main tender was for. It was for extra water. But uh, yeah, technically, if you had some cranes, the engine could be lifted back up on its side. It probably wouldn't run again, but eh. It's still able to be saved. All right, so the second locomotive we are checking out is the Sci Flyer. Now, this is a futuristic looking locomotive. I don't believe it exists in real life at all. But yeah, it's pretty neat. Um, not very aerodynamic, as you can see. But um, yeah, the horn is kind of strange. Yeah, so that's the horn. I think that's from one off of an earlier locomotive, either. I think either we're an earlier diesel or electric locomotive that railroad used. Oh gosh! I think oh gosh! Uh oh! Uh oh! That's not good. Oh! Oh no! Yeah, oh. everything's falling apart now. We're still going. We're still absolutely fine. Just oh wow! Okay. Yep. Now we're dead. All right. So the third locomotive we are checking out is the Big Blue. Now uh, I have no idea what the origins of this locomotive are. So railroad, you can take it away. Um. Yeah. So it's an early. SD70 type. I could be wrong on the on the c classification of the locomotive, but in a Grand Trunk Railroad livery, because that railroad would have operated out in Detroit, where they would have made automobiles in real life. So that's why you have the 86-foot auto parts box cars, including one with graffiti on it. That's the first for Rails Unlimited. Yeah, I noticed that back there, and now I'm seeing that it's on both sides of the car. Actually. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, I don't know actually what that graffiti says or is because I'm too far away to see it. I think there's only one way to take care of this locomotive, and uh, as you can see, railroad. I think I think you know what's happening. Oh no! All right, so before I derail this train, obviously, let me just sound the horn here. So there you go. That is what the horn sounds like. And yes, this is it. We are. We are. Uh, Pretty much going to our doom at this stage. Oh, jeez. Well, oh, whoops. Uh, 
Oh, I forgot that that's the, uh, that's okay. Well, well uh, it looks like Orion is our, uh, is our new derail spot. Jesse, the switch right here off the bridge would be perfect. Oh, that sounds good. All right, so let me just uh, prepare to click that. Yeah, prepare to try and speed up. Oh, there we go. And it looks like uh, I'm dead. Uh, no, there we go. Yep, yeah, I am. Uh, I am dead. Jesse, um, this is your boss here. Uh, I'm afraid you. I regret to inform you that you are now officially fired from the Grand Trunk Railroad uh, permanently because you destroyed uh, two million dollars worth of auto parts. Congratulations. All right, so this is the fourth locomotive we are checking out. This is the Sunset Street. Now, this is a Burlington Northern and Santa Fe mixed uh, locomotive. So that's really neat. You can see that Santa Fe had a role to play with the uh, the design on it. And you've obviously got the, uh, the Burlington Northern type of uh, orange and yellow along with the green. So that's really neat. Correction. The front livery is this... Designed so it's similar to the Santa Fe Warbonnet scheme. Burlington Northern was green, green, black, and white. That was their livery. Santa Fe was yellow and blue for their blue bonnet livery, and red, yellow, and silver oh, yeah, that's for right. their war bonnet livery. Uh, yeah. Burlington Northern has that orange and green. So yeah, I was wrong. The uh, the Santa Fe is the one with the yellow. Well, we are continuing through the wonderful world of Rails Unlimited, and I really like that I can see the mountains in the distance and the, uh, the cities, or the, uh, the large metropolitan areas, and it looks like someone has died. Now, unfortunately, this locomotive is not destined to stop. It is going to continue, um, until it falls off the bridge here. So, uh, here we go. Oh, wow. Yep, and they're all going off the bridge. Well, except you guys, but um, yeah. You mean the uh, siding? Actually, this is this one bit's fairly realistic, and this actually is kind of reminiscent of a derailment that occurred with Penn Central. There was a box car or auto rack that I think I could be wrong on the type of car that was leaning at this exact angle. Uh oh, oh, this guy is not gonna have a fun time. Yep, there he goes. Oh yeah, there he goes. He had one job and failed miserably. All right, so the fifth locomotive we are checking out is Equinox Express. Now, I want to thank everyone for letting me know about this feature on the locomotive. At night, it does something a little bit scary. So, yeah, let's go check that out. All right, so this is the Equinox Express in its angry kind of mode, I guess. It only happens whenever you spawn it at night, and I want to thank everyone again for letting me know about this feature that I forgot to showcase in the last video. So yeah, we're just gonna go full speed and see what happens when we derail this already frustrated locomotive. Here we go. And uh, yep, we're going off the side and wow. Yeah, there's tons of tomato sauce spilling everywhere. Oh God, oh, we well, have there's more a second one. Oh wow, okay, yeah, that, that's, that's a lot of tank cars. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll see you all next time guys, goodbye.